What's going on, guys? Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking us on out. If you like the Tobin and Leroy show, you guys can catch us on the WQAM YouTube page. It was boots on the ground last night at the Heat's house as they lost to the Portland Trail Blazers 110-107. Josh Hart, dagger in your heart as he hit the three-pointer at the buzzer right in front of my grill. Uh, did not feel good. It was funny because they were like going to the review booth. I was like, why is everybody staying here? Like that, that was so good and such a crusher. And, you know, you go from this moment where Max Struess hits the three-pointer, six shot to tie things up at 107 with six seconds left. And, you know, they're, they're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And it's like, are they going to call timeout? What are they going to do here? No. Dame goes full court. They send two guys at him. He trusts Josh Hart. Uh, Lowry a little late closing out on him because he's also trying to front Dame. Like, it's not really a good option there when you have Dame Dalla. But I think the thing that you always think in that situation, everybody always thinks in that situation, uh, cause I see a lot of people getting mad at, uh, you know, Kyle Lowry for that, but I feel like everybody gets mad. Everybody in that situation thinks Dame dollar is going to Dame dollar Dame time. That's what's supposed to happen. It's not supposed to be Dame makes the unselfish pitch to Josh Hart and he sinks the game winner. And then they, you know, they got into Lillard that, that play reminded me of the baseline out of bounds play. It happened about four minutes before that. It felt like it was 15 seconds long uh, where, where Simons hit the catch-and-go floater. This one felt like it was 15 seconds. Uh, Lillard going, you know, full court, got the switch, uh, and then made a, a, a heady play. I mean, I, I don't think a lot of players make that play, you know, particularly Lillard. <laughs> you know, it, it, you want to go for – for that that kill yourself uh but that just shows you you know the class and and uh iq and and trust uh and unselfishness uh, and just about winning uh, you know he kicked it to an open guy um you probably see that across the nba nine times out of ten the guy who's dribbling up is going to launch that and I, I thought we probably would have had two guys contesting that duncan and jimmy um, but he made a, a just a, the right play. If somebody's open, he for a count, he hit it, um, and uh, and Hart made a big one. But there's something I tell you what, man. Like there was a lot of people who said this Blazers team was going to suck coming into the year, and I think the thing that's interesting about this NBA season so far, and we'll get to your Heat in a second, is you know for a lot of these teams that people say we're going to be awful, and who who knows what's going to happen? We're we're a dozen games, or less than a dozen games into the season. But you think about, you know, the Utahs of the world, the Portlands of the world, even Indiana is like five and five. And people said that they were going to be out here tanking the Spurs come back to earth a little bit. They've lost four in a row, but they got off to a nice start. And people thought that these guys would all be going for Wimbayama. Like that was going to be the place that uh, that these particular teams were going to go. But Portland was the strangest one to me because you look at their roster up and down. First of all, you have. You know, one of the best point guards in the league in Damian Lillard. Anthony Simons came into his own as a really good player. Josh Hart's as solid as they come. Jeremy Grant was killing Miami yesterday all game long from downtown, from all over the place, really. And, you know, they got nice pieces all around. Like, Nurkic is a solid big. We know Justice Winslow is super capable for them. I asked Chauncey Bills about Justice Winslow before the game because, like, the thing with Justice that's interesting is Justice in this type of a role where he is just like the guy who can come in in any situation to be your Swiss Army knife, to get you buckets inside, to facilitate, to defend like a demon, to get you rebounds. But it's like you're going to look at his box score at the end of the night and you're going to be like, eh. You're like, it's a lot like, in a lot of ways, it's like what P.J. Tucker brought to the table for Miami last year. Like if Justice Winslow comes out and he gives you, you know, 12 points, a couple rebounds, a couple assists, a steal – um and is a plus 15 which i think was a game high yesterday for it, it felt it like it felt like when just just went on his own little run there in the fourth quarter and you know in a lot of ways shifted that game on the set because it really did feel like miami had the game in hand the entire time and then it really felt like you know lowry goes on this little run in the fourth quarter and you're like oh man the miami heat are about to cruise to this one and the funny thing was if you remember back to the game in Portland, you know, it was kind of like in that third quarter, the Miami put away. Now, yes, they did lose Damian Lillard in the midst of it. Not a small thing. Um, but, like, you could kind of feel like Miami start to put them away. And in this one, they just could not. I mean, the the, the defense, the transition defense was just 
continues to be such a problem for Miami because, you know, they miss shots. Teams get out there on the run and are just killing them. They're just they're just killing them for these buckets. And, you know, you see it in a quarter where Portland nearly scores 40 against you in the fourth quarter. Like, what, that – you know, and that's why I say you're looking for new ways to win. Miami's been a pretty good fourth quarter team this year. Um, it's usually been another quarter that they've had, like it really unravel on them. But that has been the killer for them. Any time Miami just has one of these quarters where they start missing shots and other teams can get out on them, it's just such an effort for them to get back into these games. And, you know, I guess it's only natural that eventually it was going to hit them in the fourth quarter, hit them right in the chops. And, you know, it was interesting, you know, yesterday seeing Kyle Lowry kind of get into that mode. You almost like wish like for Miami, somebody also offensively just kind of take over at that point where, you know, it was feeling it because they were doing the right basketball thing. Like you're, you're trusting your teammates just like Damian Lillard did, but so Miami, who started this game, I think they were like 10 of 22 from three in the first half. They were four of 17 in the second half of this game. So the shooting just completely froze up on them. And, you know, you have a Heat team that I, I definitely think, you know, has to try and find a way to put some kind of a run together. This is, uh, the, you know, this is a, a good Blazers team that got healthy today because they got Simons back and they got Damian Lillard back and Miami didn't have Tyler Hero. But, you know, the one thing that is getting a little bit frustrating as uh, a Heat fan and a supporter of the team is you're hearing all these reasons as to why they're not getting off the start that they want to. You're hearing from the team where, you know, they're not, uh, you know, they're not, all in the same roles that they were last year. And that's cool. But nobody was in those roles last year. I mean, nobody was in these consistent roles last year either, pretty much, because you had a lot of big-time stars who missed time for them in the regular season. It never really affected them. Um, and I do agree that, you know, this is a uh, a better – this is a better Eastern Conference that they are, you know, up against. But, you know, this has not been a team you – know, outs- the, the, this is not a team I feel like – that is getting the doors blown off them recently. It just feels like they usually have a quarter that gets away from them and they can't find a way to, uh, to, to write the ship. And you know, these, uh, these last three games going down to the wire that the way they have has been, uh, has been extra frustrating. Here is uh, Kyle Lowry on it after the game. It's a loss, a loss, honestly. I mean, realistically a loss is a loss. Um, it stings a little bit more because you're so close. Um, honestly, you want to win these games, but, you know, we're 11 games into a 82-game season, so we just got to just kind of chip away at it and honestly we'll take it game by game, one by one, and just kind of get to a point of, you know, get to 500 first, and then you kind of just build from there. But we can't even think about 500. We just got to think about getting the next game. Gabe Vincent also uh, echoed a lot of what Kyle Lowry had to say. Yeah, I mean, well, first off, like, losing sucks, whether it's by one or 20 or 50, whatever the case may be. So we want to win every game, every possession, et cetera. Um, And obviously it's frustrating. You know, we're a room full of competitors. We want to win anything we're doing, whether it's a game of Uno or a game of basketball. So um, we're going to get our heads together and figure it out. So we'll see what ends up happening uh, this week. They got the Hornets coming up for a couple pending weather. Um, You know, in my mind... Not that I expect them to win any game right now because it feels like they can lose to any team. They lost to the winless Sacramento Kings and, you know, needed a buzzer beater to beat them again. So I don't expect any win right now. I just, they're just not playing good basketball. But I feel like, you know, if you're going to put anything together, man, you better go get those Hornets games at home before you welcome in the Phoenix Suns next Monday. You know, they are been very, very good. They are, they've, uh, they've been humming like a machine and, and then, you know, you got to take advantage of all these home games that you have. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's very critical for them to do that. Um, it's good to have Jimmy back. You're hopeful that, uh, that's the case, but man, um, it has been, uh, it has been a, a frustrating time so far for, uh, for the people in Heatland to get behind, uh, this team right now, because, they just feel like they're searching for something, man. You know, Kyle makes the point it's only 11 games. I get it. Uh, you don't want to panic or anything like that. It's a long, long season. Certainly, you know, being three games under 500 is not a uh, is not a, a mountain to climb. They can get out of this. 
but it is a uh, it is a situation where you know you you got to want you're going to want to start getting like some kind of a streak together especially when you got the horns coming in not that I expect them to be any team but you know that's a team they should be the hornets are in turmoil they have a lot of things that they're dealing with and you know if you can't expect them to go win both games against charlotte at home like i don't know which game you can go expect them to go get um, and I think the fan base is getting restless. I do think that there is an, there's an element to this fan base knowing that they, you know, ran it back. They have been in trade rumors, uh, Kevin Durant, you see what Donovan Mitchell has done for the Cleveland Cavaliers. You see, uh, now there's Anthony Davis trade rumors. I do think that the fan base is going to get restless if, uh, if they can't kind of write the ship because not only did they run it back, but they ran it back and kind of double down in a way because everybody is paid on this team. You know, Jimmy's got an extension. Bam's uh, locked up. Kyle Lowry's got a couple more years. Tyler Hero just got an extension. So your your top four guys are all locked in. Uh, Ian Caleb Martin got a multi-year deal. Really the only guys and the guys who really feel like they bring the most energy every single night are Max Struess and Gabe Vincent, and they're the guys who aren't guaranteed anything. You know, they're basically essentially in contract years trying to uh, prove their way and set themselves up and get those contracts and – it almost feels like you can count on them on a nightly basis because they they have a lot riding on this year, whereas everybody else, it just feels like everybody else is just like, ah, it's November. You know, there's so much season left. You know, usually in basketball terms, calendar-wise, this is like the second week of the season. But, you know, I, I do think that the, 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 the unrest is there. It, it's rumbling from the fan base. I think that, you know, there are people that, you know, aren't counting them out yet, but are certainly like, you know, giving them a a second look like, all right, like when's this going to start turning around?